Hi there, today I'll be modifying the scheduling algorithm for xv6. I'm using the code from an article on Medium by Harshal Shri. You can read the article and simply follow the steps from the link in the description. It's the same thing I'll be doing. But if you want a step-by-step -step video walkthrough of the article, then that's what this video is for. Before we start, make sure you have xv6 running on your computer. I have a video on how to compile xv6 for Mac and Linux. If you got xv6 to work, then let's get started. To start with, I'll enter the directory containing xv6 public code. The first thing to do is add definitions for the system calls we are implementing. For that, I'll open syscall.h. The program adds two new system calls. The first one is cps, which prints the current process states. The second one is chpr, which can change the priority of a process. These processes are defined with system call numbers 22 and 23. Next, we have to edit the eproc.h file. Scroll down to the structure definition of proc and add a new structured variable called priority. This variable stores the priority of each process as an integer. After this, we should edit the header file defs.h. Over here, we'll be adding the function prototypes for CPS and CHPR. Scroll down to page break 16 where the proc.c definitions are present. The first prototype is int CPS, which accepts no parameters. The second prototype is int chpr, which accepts two parameters, int pid and int priority. And that's all for defs.h. Next, I'll be going to users.h to do the same thing, but looks like users.h doesn't exist. It turns out that the file name is user.h. It's a singular and not plural. In user.h, I'll be adding the same two declarations under the system call section. After this, the next file to go to is proc.c. This is where the definitions for the functions will be made. I'll scroll down all the way to the bottom of the file to add the definitions. The code for the function definitions of CPS and CHPR are directly out of the Medium article. I'll leave the GitHub links for the definitions too in the description. You can choose to type it out or you can just copy paste the code. Now that CPS is done, I'll add the definition of CHPR. Now that the function definitions for CPS and CHPR are done, we'll be going to sysproc.c and making the definitions for the system call functions syscps and sysCHPR. These functions basically call CPS and CHPR. Again, you can choose to type them or copy paste them. The definition for syscps is short, it just returns CPS. The function chpr accepts two parameters. These are declared in sysCHPR. There are a couple of exception cases tested in sysCHPR before the call to CHPR is made. After this, changes have to be made to the uses.s file. The .s extension indicates that the file contains assembly level code. After this, there are changes to make to the syscall.c file. Scroll down to the place where all the extern int declarations are made. And add extern int syscps. 
followed by extern int sysChpr. Below this, there is a function pointer array. Over here, the system call numbers are linked to the respective system calls. After this, a new file called ps.c is created. I won't be making any changes to the original code. You can just copy paste this part as it is. All this file does is make a call to CPS. Next, a file called nice.c is created. This is where the call to the chpr function is made. You can just copy paste this part. Like I said before, the code will be identical to the blog post. After this, we'll be going back to proc.c. Scroll down to page break 32. Over here, you'll find the alloc proc function. This is where an addition to set the default priority of every process is made. To make the change, locate the found tag. You'll see p state and p pid being set. Below that, add a new line, p priority equal to 10. As per the medium article, the default priority is set to 10. Next, let's head to the exec.c file. This is where the attributes of a child process is set. Towards the bottom of the file, you'll find a label called bad. Above that, return zero. So you want to add a new line and set the curd proc priority equal to two. In the article, the default priority of every child process is two. Next, a new file called dpro.c is created. This file is used to create dummy processes, which helps in demonstrating priority scheduling. I did copy paste this part because I'm lazy. In this file, there's a large for loop with a calculation to consume CPU time. With dpro.c done, we head over to the make file. Scroll down to the uprog section. Here calls for dpro ps and nice are added. Next, we head back to the proc.c file. It's finally time to implement priority scheduling. So scroll down to um, page break 42, where you'll find the void scheduler function. As you can see, there's a definition for the default scheduler function. We'll be changing all of this to the code present in the median article. You can just copy paste this or you can type it out if you want a better understanding of how the code works. Once this function has been modified, priority scheduling is implemented. And this is the last file to edit. At this point, xv6 should be ready to run. So I'll enter make and hope it works. Unfortunately, there is a compiler error. The error says that the following .o files are not recognized. After doing some digging, I found that to fix the error, all you have to do is remove all the .o files and compile it from scratch. This can be done by typing rm star .o. Now the .o files have been removed. I'll execute make once more. Now it looks like the kernel has successfully been compiled. Next, I'll type in qemu nox to run xv6. But turns out there is an error. It says that stats.h does not exist, which means I probably named the file wrong. After checking, I found out the file is called stat.h. It's singular again. This is a mistake I made while typing the code. The file names in the source code is correct. 
Now I fixed a bunch of other mistakes I made while typing the code. If you use the source code as it is, you won't run into these errors, so don't worry. With this, XV6 should be ready to run. We'll type in ls and cd new system calls added. There's a ps, dpro, and nice. ps shows the current process states. If we type in ps, you can see init sh and ps listed in a table with the PID state and priority. To create dummy processes, I'll type in dpro and semicolon twice. This should create four new processes, two parents and two child processes. If we do ps again, you can see four new dpro processes created. Two of them have a priority of two and the other two have a priority of 10. You can see one DPRO process, the one with PID 11, is in the running state and the other one with PID 10 is in the runnable state. To change the priority, we enter nice, then the PID, which is a 10, and then the priority, which I'll set to 1, and enter PS to see what's changed. This should make the DPRO process with PID 10 in the running state and the process with PID 11 is now in the runnable state. If we execute nice once more to reduce the priority of the process, then it goes to the runnable state, and the other process which was in runnable state goes to running. With this, we have successfully implemented and demonstrated priority scheduling in XV6. So now we'll exit XV6 with control AX. And that is all for this video. Once again, credit to Harshal for the article and for the code. Thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe and I'll see you again soon.